Williams. And I'm Barbara Walters, and this is 2020. From ABC News, around the world and into your home, the stories that touch your life. This is 2020, with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. San Catali! San Catali, buca de la vaya! My name is Mina! You've seen it in the movie. Tonight, a true exorcism. An eerie, chilly, mesmerizing ritual performed by Roman Catholic priests. In the name of Jesus Christ, I demand the spirit of evil to leave now. I don't want to leave. We don't want Gina. The church insists demonic spirits plague this teenage girl. John Cardinal O'Connor has warned that Satan is among us. His evil spreading. Sinners! Twenty twenty follow this story for twelve months. Tonight, Tom Gerald takes you inside the Catholic Church for an extraordinary event never before seen on American television. The exorcism. Catholics are taught that the devil indeed exists, that he is in our midst, and that social ills like pornography and drugs and violence are evidence of his handiwork. But when the subject is Satan, nothing is more provocative, more terrifying, more fascinating than the ritual of exorcism. Tonight, in a two-part report, we will show you an actual exorcism, and nothing like this has ever been seen on American television. And the fact that exorcism still takes place surprises many people. But about a year ago, we read about one, and we then located two Catholic priests who are experts on demonology and exorcism. After numerous conversations and the full consent of the clergy and the family involved, we were allowed to watch. And in Tom Gerald's report, you'll see the same extraordinary process of discovery that we went through. One note, some of the sights and sounds, particularly in part two, may be disturbing, certainly for children. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here. The Holy Mass, the centerpiece of worship for the Roman Catholic Church. This early weekday morning service is peaceful, serene, and the source of spiritual inspiration, both for the congregation and the priests who lead it. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of... For the James Labar draws strength from its celebration, willpower that's essential when Labar participates in another ancient church ritual, the rite of exorcism. The devil does exist, evil does exist, and possession is possible and does happen. For glory and honor is yours, almighty Father. And this is accepted by all who are in communion with the church. Labor works closely with one of the few exorcists in the Catholic Church. He calls himself Father A for Anonymous. It is a struggle between two opponents for survival, as it were, in one respect. In this case, it's the struggle of evil. We all are trying to be good. We're trying to know and love and serve God to the best of our ability. But sometimes we want to do it on our terms instead of his terms. It's been known by many names down through the centuries. The Devil, Beelzebub, Satan, Lucifer. From Catholic teaching and from the Bible itself, we know the Devil is a fallen angel. He lost his identity with God, but he didn't lose the powers that he had. Satan, according to those who believe in exorcism, is capable of possessing the minds of innocent human victims and turning them evil. The Catholic Church's Book of Rituals includes a group of ancient prayers called the Rite of Exorcism. When these special prayers are spoken to a possessed person, the believers say, the demons must leave. Exorcism has become a highly controversial procedure. Years ago, mental disorders like Tourette syndrome, schizophrenia, multiple personality disorder, even problems like epilepsy, 
were misdiagnosed as cases of demonic possession. As modern science showed that those were medical problems, the practice of exorcism sharply declined. But interest was rekindled in 1973 after the release of the film, The Exorcist, which was based on an actual, well-documented case of suspected possession. The highly dramatized film seems so far-fetched that exorcism was still largely dismissed as the stuff of horror movies. But then, last year in New York, an incredible secret was revealed. At St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan, exorcism came out of the dark of the past and returned to the world of the present. The date, last March 4th. At this landmark church, one of the nation's most powerful spiritual leaders, John Cardinal O'Connor, delivered a provocative message warning the devil was real, his evil was spreading, and exorcisms approved by the church were being used to rid some people of their demons. With the Cardinal's revelation that two exorcisms had been performed recently, the ancient rite once again became the focus of a controversy between the church and modern psychiatry, between religious beliefs and medical science. But could those remarkable claims of demonic possession be true? Father A is the officially sanctioned exorcist called upon by the New York Archdiocese. He's the priest who had performed those two previous exorcisms. After the Cardinal's announcement, Father Labar, who assists Father A, received over 75 cases from all over the country to investigate. It's a painstaking process that can take over six months before the church will approve an exorcism. Father, how carefully are the subjects screened before an exorcism is agreed to? The first thing we want to do is make sure they have no medical problems that they're falsely attributing to diabolical powers. Then I will sit down with a couple of psychiatrists as well as psychologists that I know will go over the cases and talk about them. The four major signs that we look for in someone we suspect is possessed would be, first of all, they would have uh, great strength. Then they have levitation. They will rise off the ground with no particular uh, reason. Then they'll have clairvoyance. They'll be able to tell you something that happened at a distance, something they couldn't possibly know. And then generally they will speak in languages that they never studied. Sometimes the person will react just by the fact that I've come. And as a result of it, we have an indication that there is something there. Other experts in the church are less certain about the procedure. With experience as both a Jesuit priest and a psychiatrist, Dr. James Gill has extensive knowledge in the realm of religion and the science of the mind. So I think there's a a tendency to, to interpret what you see in terms of the background that you have. So that if you have a background in theology, you're inclined to, to think theologically and think, well, maybe this is a battle of evil versus good, Satan versus God, and to quickly rush in with that interpretation. I came out with strange voices, things that I had been seeing and stuff. One case Father Labar received yeah. involved 16-year-old Gina. I saw... Um, demons and stuff, um, people who died. For years, Gina had violent seizures in which she would spit, anything. vomit, scream in strange it. voices, and, know what it was. I thought it was my mind and, and have visions of demons. She had not attended school for several months. You know, it's something not natural of the human being. It's something from evil. In an attempt to stop the bizarre outbursts, her mother, Felisa, had taken Gina to a self-professed psychic healer. She's like a possessed. He just scratched me in the back with the scissors and over here in front of the chest because he was a spiritist and we thought he was going to do some exorcism because he said I had something wrong with me and I told my mother I didn't want to go. But she said, it's good for you. I said, I but Gina's behavior only worsened. And these voices, she makes the voices at night in her room. In the middle of the night. Gina had spent two months in the Miami Children's Hospital psychiatric ward where she had been treated by Dr. Warren Slanger. She was actively psychotic, very agitated, and was having marked difficulty functioning, even as it relates to basic self-care. Gina was diagnosed as having recurring psychotic episodes. In your studies, uh, your actual cases and practices, have you ever seen anyone possessed? No. That you thought were possessed? Never have. Do you think there's such a thing? Uh, personally, um, I would doubt it. But traditional psychological treatment had little effect on Gina's condition after she returned home. I was sick with these evil things, and every time I was 
coming out with voices. Imagine, I'm the mother. I see my, mo my daughter suffer. Desperate, her mother turned to the family's Catholic church. It was frightening. Uh, it just, the, my first contact with her um, sent chills throughout my body. In fact, I... Therapist Carol Raza was part of the original team who evaluated Gina's behavior for the church. The family reports that they would see her levitating. They would see her being pulled across the room and there was no one there pulling her. She possessed knowledge of things and people that no way she should have. She knew where I had been the previous week dealing with another case. She mentioned the person by name, and I found that very astounding and very revealing. After reviewing several reports from psychiatrists and transcripts describing Gina's outburst in meetings with members of her church, fathers A and Labar decide that indeed, this is a possible case of demonic possession. Then we present the case to the bishop who makes the ultimate decision whether or not we're gonna proceed. What we hope to be able to do tomorrow is to assist a young girl who has been deeply troubled for some period of time. After six months of investigation, official approval to proceed is granted, and the priests from New York meet with the team that's been assembled to assist in the ritual. At no point in time do you address her or anything that comes from her. It's looking for an out, and if someone falls victim to that, then now we have two people to deal with. It's not a game we're playing. It's something very real to the person involved. It's something very real to all of us. Members uh, of the team include Carol Raza, the therapist, a nurse, a Spanish translator, women who will help restrain the girl, additional priests, and a doctor. Just join in prayer for a moment. Lord, we call upon you now to be with us. We ask you now to give us your guidance as well as your blessing to watch over us this night as well as tomorrow. We ask your protection. We ask the protection of the heavenly angels, especially Saint Michael. The priest who is, is called to do this, he's supposed to pray and fast for a number of days. I started fasting last week. I could die tomorrow. I could be attacked. I could be taken over. And there has to be that willingness to suffer as well as to sacrifice. It's a terrifying experience at times is a very frightening experience. There's times you want to run away, you just as soon pass it up and go away. But once you walk down this road, you can't go back. When our story continues, we'll take you step by step through Gina's exorcism, a mesmerizing session in which all those participating must be prepared for the unexpected. Go out. The devil plays a great game of deception and will not reveal itself or themselves for quite a period of time. Don't die. Stay away. Part two of Tom Gerald's report, right after this. We continue now with our remarkable coverage of an exorcism performed by Roman Catholic priests. Why is the church allowing this? Father James Labar, whom we've been seeing in Tom Jarrell's report, told us that many people don't share the church's belief that the devil is real. The church hopes that this may change some minds. And Father Labar said another reason is to let the public see firsthand that the church can help those whom it feels need relief from evil spirits. Now, so far, we've seen how the church determined that a teenage girl named Gina was plagued by demons. Shortly, the exorcist, Father A, will finalize the investigation before beginning the exorcism. First, on the morning of the exorcism, the room is being prepared. The last time that uh, we met with this young lady, she began to take everything down and throw everything, and it was too dangerous, especially when she started with the cushions. It's the morning of the exorcism. As Sister Lois Schaefer prepares the room in the convent, she recalls previous meetings the team had with Gina while investigating her problems. She started hurling the cushion and then firing it at us. And not just the one cushion, but she was sitting here and she just turned around and grabbed this and began to throw it, tearing her hair just out, just very awful looking, eyes bulging, face getting blotchy red. So that's why I'm going to take down the pictures, too, as well as the cushions. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we gather this morning to pray to God our Father for help for our sister Gina. We want her to be made whole in the eyes of God as well as the eyes of men. The priest's confrontation with the devil begins with a mass. Gina's unaware of the purpose of her visit to the convent. Father A says secrecy ensures the demons cannot prepare for this surprise encounter with the exorcist. I want you to tell me what you're feeling, honey. What did I do to de deserve this? You did nothing to deserve this, Gina. Do you want to be free of this? Yes. Are you going to help us to free you? Yes. Father A tries to draw the demons out. He gives Gina a glass of holy water, hoping to provoke a response. Before making the final decision to begin the rite of exorcism, he probes her psyche, identifying exactly what demons he's confronting. Tell me, Gina, you know what, you can tell me what you feel. At this point, things yeah. are moving along I rather slowly. Feel. The devil plays a great game of deception and will not reveal itself or themselves for quite a period of time. And let it be a sign of protection for our sister Gina. But then something does happen. Gina begins <coughs> retching. Strength. And as the pre-exorcism examination intensifies, unexpectedly, low and unfamiliar voices begin to emerge. Gina said to me, I have to go. And I told you, I don't want to go at all. You understand? Do you understand? No, you understand. I don't want to go. The very first time that I heard the voice manifested, I was quite surprised, hadn't expected that at all, and I thought, boy, here we go, fast and furious. Then, during a break, while the team prepares to begin the rite of exorcism, Gina becomes violent. In the name of Jesus Christ, I silence Minga. I command the spirit of evil to leave now. We don't want to leave. We don't want Gina. Praise be Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. No, I was trying to stress to her how important it is that she really Christ, wants help. She has to help God. us. Get! Command the spirit of evil. Then all of a sudden that insidious face changed to where Gina was no longer present. That's when the entity started to manifest itself by speaking and revealing who he was. My name is Minga. Minga. I command Minga. Can the person undergoing this say stop? Halt. I've had enough. We have to be sure that it's the person speaking. You want pain? I'll give you pain. If during the course it's the entity masking himself and trying to make us believe that I'm fine, leave me alone. This is where we continue until we're sure that we have what we started. Why aren't you praying, Gina? No, you're not. I'm here. Just as quickly as the episode began, it's over. I'm here. Gina becomes more composed and is able to describe Zion and Minga, two of the ten different entities she claims are controlling her. Zion is African. Mm -hmm. Is he an African of this type of today's age or is he African of, in the jungle? In the jungle. Who else? Minga. Who's Minga? Minga's a very short woman. Often an adolescent oh, will have uh, hallucinations and see things or hear things or smell things and believe things, have delusions, as we call them, uh, that look very much like the, the behaviors and the thinking patterns and the imagination of the, of the possessed person. Schizophrenics, very often, especially if they're paranoid, will often just burst forth with fierce expressions of anger and hostility and rage. Gina? A psychiatrist who had worked with this girl said he was convinced she was psychotic not necessarily possessed. How do you explain the difference? Well, I think one of the basic you know, questions I would have to ask is whether the psychiatrist believes that possession is possible. And merely because it's psychotic doesn't necessarily exclude um, the, the presence of demons. Because the question I always ask them, I said, all right, you've explained it this far, but now what? What's after that? It's still happening. And they can't answer it. The priests consider what they've seen and make the final and difficult decision. Gina will be given an exorcism. Holy Lord. It begins. You who sent your only son into this world in order that he might crush this roaring lion. 
Father A. reads the sacred Roman Catholic rite of exorcism. Throw your terror, Lord, over the beast who is destroying what belongs to you. The prayers from the book he holds have remained virtually unchanged since the Renaissance. Obey me in everything. Although I am an unworthy servant of God, do no damage to this person or to any other people in this house. Lord Jesus Christ, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts and our lives, Lord. Send your Holy Spirit into our lives, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, our living God. Stay away! I now exercise you, most unclean spirit. You gave power to your apostles to pass through dangers unharmed. Armed with the power of your Holy Spirit, no I can attack Help! the evil, evil spirit in confidence and security. My he God! Your he threw you out in the exterior well, It's like a surgeon going in, trying to probe. No one You're trying to surgically lay bare what is there until you get to the core of what you're looking for. Oh, shit. I therefore enjoin oh, every no. unclean spirit, Gina! each devil, no! each part Please! of Satan. Help! As the prayers intensify, so do Gina's physical reactions. The team's doctor ties her arms and legs to the chair. Fear and take flight at the name of our Lord. Grace, the power of you. Blessed are thou, woman, and blessed are thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us to be found in the hour. That's part of the objection of the demons to leaving. Somebody help me! I said I don't want to go! It also could be a prelude to levitation. The rising up off the ground, if she weren't being held down, the resistance could be such that she would rise up off the floor and go to the ceiling where nobody could touch her. Death is your lot, impious one, because you are the prince of cursed homicides, master of the most evil actions, the teacher of heretics, the inventor of all obscenity. Go out, therefore, impious one. Now we're heading into the class, in terms of what we call the confrontation stage, where we're crashing together. God the Father, God the Son, God, the Holy I was seeing a 16-year-old little girl, you know, uh, being screamed at and yelled at, you know, and then I had to fight with myself and say, wait a minute, you know, there's something more happening here. Having been involved in, in similar situations, I know the reality of evil. Three elements. You would say, no one who has done great will enter eternal life. And those who have done evil will... When I glanced from the book and looked into her face, you could see the hatred was so intense. At times it's very nerve-wracking to see that, that look glaring at you. Knowing that the evil that's present hates you so much. It's, it's a frightening moment. I don't want to burn! Sinners! The Holy Spirit is getting worse! Now that it is past, or as a watch of the night, Jesus, you make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, the which the dawn springs. Father Labar voices the prayers word for word. Father, and generated before all time. Watching Father A closely for signs of weakening. I felt the power of God, and I also felt the power of evil. In every single case I've had to deal, I've had to confront fear in terms of the evil. May God have pity on us and bless us. May let his face shine upon us. Gina seems to switch uncontrollably between personalities. Give place to our Lord Jesus Christ, who poured out his blood for men. Give place to the Holy Spirit, who through the blessed apostles here. The exorcism sometimes can go wrong if the priest who's performing it suddenly becomes overcompassionate or overcaring. Somebody help me! And decides that maybe the devil should bother him instead of the person. And then you the whole thing could now. collapse. You leave now. For a moment, it started to happen. But then I you caught myself and started all over. Jesus Christ commands you. You it must leave. It sows a spirit now. of confusion. It sows a spirit of fear. Now, it makes you think that things are happening to your body. The rite of exorcism continues without let up for several excruciating hours. As Father A reaches the final stage, when he says Zion, Minga, and the other diabolical influences must leave her. Zion, leave now. Gina becomes complacent, ready to obey the commands of the exorcist. Or you experience the fires of hell. Zion, leave now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command any other spirits that are present in Gina to speak out now and reveal themselves. Minga has to go now. The cross compels you. The spirit of lust, that spirit of lust must lead Gina. I command you to depart now to leave our sister alone forever and never to return to her or to anyone else on this earth. In the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gina, kiss the cross of Christ. Mama's going to take you home. You're going to relax. Okay? It's over. Gina appears to have come out of a trance. Did you see a difference in her look, her face? I did. What was um, it? I, I just saw a kid that was a lot more relaxed, and she was more at peace with um, whatever, maybe because it was over, you know, but she was more peaceful. The night of the exorcism, the young girl said some of the troubling voices had returned to haunt her in her bedroom. Father A went there and performed an exorcism on the house, saying it was to drive the evil spirits out. But more was needed. Within a few days, all concerned, the priest and the girl's mother, decided she should be brought here to the Miami Children's Hospital for further analysis and treatment through a more conventional approach to mental problems. Confinement for two weeks in the psychiatric unit. Did she seem to be in better condition when she arrived a year and several months later? Yes, uh, in that she was still distorting reality, but not to the degree that she had previously and uh, although agitated again, not to the degree that she had been previously. She gradually re responded to a combination of medication and various psychotherapies. What uh, medication is she on now? Can you... Currently, she's uh, on haloperidol, which is an antipsychotic medication. Haloperidol is a strong tranquilizer, which Gina continued to take after her release from the hospital. Is that a measure of failure or success as far as the exorcism is concerned? Are drugs a part of the treatment? Actually, it has nothing to do with it. Um, the drugs treat the natural aspect of things, which help control her, you know, basic physical characteristics to allow her to begin to learn and such. But the one thing that I believe she has said consistently, those voices, those animals don't bother me anymore. And that's whether or not she's had any drugs. And the exorcism, could that have contributed to her well-being? I would doubt it, personally. Well, the, the good effect, obviously, would be if she were possessed, that the uh, possession would be terminated. But even if she's not possessed, if, um, if she believes that exorcism is going to be helpful, um, in all probability, it will. We have waited two months to observe any long-term effects. While still on medication, Gina's just come home from her first days back at school. I feel much better, um, thanks to God that he liberated me from evil, and, and I had a lot of bad things happen to me in the beginning, but I'm much better now, and I'm very happy now. I feel free. Now, as you can see, she's uh, very lucid. You can, she, she stays in the here and now. I mean, we can talk to her, we can reason with her. Um, you can start to impose some behavioral techniques on her. You know, she now she's on the road to leading a normal life, whereas before she didn't have a chance. Were you frightened during your experience with Father A? After I got to know him and he has prayed for me, I was not frightened. You remember pain? Oh, um, it's just that, he, you know, he was praying for me and everything. He just pressed the cross a little too hard on my, my, my top of my head because it hurt, you know. It was just too tight. But, um, I know, it, it was pain in other ways, too, because those 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 evil spirits were there and they had to leave that day and and i'm very happy now lord jesus christ you sent your apostles i leave you peace my peace I give. father labar continues his public role as a priest in a small thy church come, will be while privately he investigates cases he considers as those of possible I demonic know, possession Father A believes that with each ritual, something dies inside him. He spends lonely days and sleepless nights, tormented from having incurred the direct displeasure of pure hatred. This, he says, is the price the exorcist pays. That's the devil himself trying to weaken and destroy me. Why do this? She has a right to a normal life like you and I. And she's turned to the church asking for help. If you heard the cry that she and her mother have made, you would respond in the same way. 
Evil and exorcism are back in the headlines again. The Catholic Church has allowed an exorcism to be filmed, and some are saying this sensationalizes the very intense struggle between good and evil. Well, last summer, Inside Edition traveled to Italy, where real exorcisms are taking place and where the subject of Satanism is no joke. <laughs> Satanism, an ancient religion worshipping the devil. You are watching a film paid for by an Italian satanic cult. The film was actually shown on Italian television, nudity and all. Some believe this to be harmless play acting, but others see danger. Some satanic groups really engage in uh, child molesting, uh, sacrifice of animals, uh, uh, desecrating cemeteries or Catholic churches. There have been instances of human sacrifice, but uh, no uh, hard evidence. In Turin, a working class city in the north of Italy, authorities are actively investigating satanic cults. Some in this area believe many mysteries could be solved if the satanic groups are penetrated. Should people in Turin be afraid of these Satanists? Yes, they are dangerous. There are very many murders in this town, especially murders of young and pretty women due to the rituals, the satanic rituals. The outbreak of Satanism has startled the powerful Catholic Church in Italy, so much so that Pope John Paul has sent six priests, specialists in psychology and theology, to Turin to perform exorcisms. That's correct, exorcisms, similar to those portrayed in the movies. I cast you out, unclean spirit, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They perform a real exorcism according to the ritual of the Roman Catholic Church. Around 5% of the cases submitted to them. The Catholic Church admits it has performed 15 exorcisms in Turin mm -hmm. in the last few years. Yes, correct. The Catholic Church does not like to talk about exorcism, which is the expulsion of evil from a human being. When New York's John Cardinal O'Connor admitted exorcisms are taking place, he was quickly told to stop talking about the subject by church authorities. Inside Edition traveled to Yugoslavia to talk with a Franciscan priest who studied psychology at Loyola University in Chicago and who recently performed an exorcism on a woman in Sicily. Was there danger to you or to the woman? No, no, there was danger for her. We literally had to hold her down. She wanted to go out the window. She was trying to break the window. We had to literally hold her down and she was strong. But that power just kept breaking, weakening. We, through the prayer, just kept diminishing until she was wimping. You know, it's like, and you keep on, it's like you keep on keeping on, man, until it's gone. People are going to say, Father, you're crazy. Uh, you? I'm sorry, they're the ones that are crazy. They're the ones that are out of touch with reality. You saw That's it. what I say, this is reality. The official position of the Catholic Church is that exorcisms do take place, but 99% of the time, those seeking the right are referred to psychiatrists. Just ahead, a dramatic...